I'm going to give an introduction about the particle swarm optimization. So I'm, I'm going to start with an animation. So you can see that uh, we have a school of fish right here. And then so, so if they are going to find the food source in this environment, and then so what they are going to do is just to work together and pass the information to their labor hall. And finally, you will find that uh, there will be something happen like this. Yeah. So we are going to learn the behavior how come the school how come the fish will do schooling so that uh, how do they what model it would be so that uh, we can transfer this knowledge into a numerical method we call this is the particle swarm optimization okay this is the thing i'm going to talk about in this topic the particle swarm optimization we are going to build a model for uh, the schooling of birds so we have a flock of bird right here so we have one two three but actually you can imagine that we have many in this space and this space that is the working space so we would like to develop an algorithm like this send the bird to different uh, to the workspace and then sense the enrollment collect the information so that we come up with this algorithm say when we focus on this particular bird and then actually what i'm going to talk about will happen to every bird right here once we determine the heading angle the heading direction and then so we would like to determine where to go and how far this bird is going to go so this one we just find out that um, say this is the distance and then so we have to update the position of this bird to this one using the update rule like this say i call this is the bird i and then um, at the iteration t and then in the next iteration t plus one and then it goes to this point so we are going to determine the velocity yeah so the velocity so that it goes from this point to this point and then that is the basic update rule for particle swarm optimization so it means that this is the current position of a bird the bird i and then so plus the velocity i t plus one and then it becomes the next position that is right here so when we talk about particle swarm optimization this is the basic update rule and then what we are going to determine that is how do we find the vit plus one okay so we have two strategy global pso and the local pso i'm going to talk about that later on that means based on this concept we are going to develop from there okay so just a quick recall about the swarm intelligence particle swarm optimization is a kind of swarm intelligence swarm intelligence all we talk about that is a kind of collective behavior this is decentralized that means we do not have um, a leader to tell the agent what to do so everything is self-organized when we talk about the self-organized uh, self-organization and then so we will recall what it is later on yeah because we have mentioned that in the end chronology optimization so when we talk about swarm intelligence swarm it means that uh, we need to have a population this population that is a simple agent just like the end chronology optimization so we use the ant and then so now we are talking about the birds they are going to serve as the simple agent and interactive with each other interact with others so that they will pass the local information to each other and then so the next thing that is after they collected information and the global behavior will be emerged so that the solution is emerging and then so rather than define yeah so we can have more example of such kind of swarm intelligence yeah, so we talk about insect uh, colonies, uh, that is the ant, um, ant colony optimization. And now I'm talking about the bird blocking as well as uh, in the literature. You can see that uh, we have different kind of animal swarm. Yeah? Okay, self-organization. That means when we talk about the self-organization, that is the main component about 
the swarm intelligence, the most important thing that is the solution that is at the global level, that is coming up from the interaction of the low level component. When we talk about the low level component, that is the agent itself. Yeah. Four basic ingredients. I'm not going to go into the detail again. If you would like to recall what they are, please refer to the end coin optimization. But briefly, we have the positive feedback that is to give a reward to the right move. And then the negative feedback that is to prevent premature conversion. convergence. That means we are going to balance the um, exploitation and exploration. And then so using positive feedback and negative feedback, as well as we are going to introduce the randomness or the errors into the system to make a better balance. Yeah, and the interaction as well. So I'm going to tell you how do these birds or the particles they are going to communicate. Yeah, okay. So just go a little bit further. That is why do animal swarm. It gives us some ideas. What would be the motivation of doing swarming, and then so this motivation will be transferred to the particle swarm optimization as well. Yeah, in the lecture, when animals swarm, and then the ultimate goal that is to survive. Yeah, survival that is the ultimate goal. So that in so that they can defend. Against predator because um, all of these agents, they are weak agent. When they act together, and then so they will become a stronger colonies. Yeah. So some examples that is the detection of predators. Each agent is, is acting like a sensor. So if we have more sensors in the colonies, of course we have more information about the environment. Yeah. So that can minimize the chance. Of being captured because they are able to detect the predator, yeah, and also enhance the success in finding the food, yeah, as well as they uh, have a better chance to find a mate because they do not work together. Uh, they do not work alone, yeah, as well as decrease the chance, uh, decrease the energy consumption because they work together to complete the task, yeah. So. This collective behavior will give a lot of advantage to the swarm. And now, that is the problem is, if we would like to develop an algorithm so that um, numerically we can use it to optimize a function or a course, what we are going to do? The first thing we need to do is we need to have a model. Once we have a model, we know how to model the behavior of these kind of agents so that the num numerically we can implement that. This is very similar to the end model. Yeah, so we have the bit experiment. Yeah, in the end colony optimization for the particles swarm optimization, we based we are based on this coordinated collective behavior. So this. Collective behavior is proposed by uh, the Waylot in 1987. Basically, we have um, three assumptions. The first one that is each individual has local knowledge. It suggests that the agents they are simple. Yeah, they are simple agent, and also it demonstrates certain level of connective capability, certain kind of intelligence. Yeah. It does not have high intelligence, so that uh, they are something like an, an stimulus uh, response agent, and then bound by the law of physics. So this one that is the collective behavior of the reality, yeah, or I mean the wheel swarm, yeah. Later on, we are going to remove some assumptions in order to make it work numerically, and also we find that these. Collective behavior is subject to three simple rules. The first one that would be the separation. So assume that all these triangles they are birds, and then uh, the first rule is the separation. Each agent they try to move away from its labor. For example, when we look at the red agent, and then uh, because they they are so close, 
this bird is going to move away so that um, they are able to collect more information. Otherwise, the local information will be very similar to each other. And then so this information may, may be redundant. And the next one, alignment. Alignment, that is the heading angle of an agent. That would be the FH, the FH heading angle of the labor. The blues right here are the labor, so that they can move in a similar direction without collision. Yeah, so that means after they collect the information and then they can determine where to go, where to search the food. Yeah, so and the next one, cohesion, cohesion that is if they are so, um, um, if they are not close enough and then all the agent they try to go toward the fh position of the labor yeah so that they can make easy for themselves to pass the local information yeah okay now we are going to talk about how do we build a meta heuristic that is we are going to transfer the collective um i mean to transfer this coordinative collective behavior into a numerical method because when we talk about a bird it is in a three-dimensional environment but when we talk about the optimization a numerical optimization it could be an n-dimensional space yeah so say when we have a course function f x and then so where x that is x1 x2 x3 up to any number yeah so this is now this is a particle we call this as a particle when we put this particle in a hyperdimensional space and then you will find out that so we come up with a point but when we talk about a hyperdimensional space I'm not able to draw that yeah so for example if we are going to have x1 x2 x3 and then so when we talk about a point right here and then it will give you the value of x1 and x2 and x3 so this one we call this as a particle yeah that is a solution to this cause function now in this figure i cannot draw um, the cost so called associated with this this is x as a vector associated with this particle we have is cost so that means um, according to what I just mentioned uh, we extend it into n dimensional space and then each solution we call it a particle and then this particle is going to serve as an agent it it is going to fly through the space to search for the local minimum yeah so that means you can imagine that uh, we have a lot of this part particle in this space and then they are going to search the space and collectively and send the local information to each other yeah okay and now i'm going to talk a little bit more about the basic particle swarm optimization concept and then that is what do we need to have in order to build this particle swarm optimization and what it is pso or particle swarm optimization it is a kind of population based optimization technique it means that when we talk about population it means that we need to have a number of candidate solution we call this as particle one particle two particle three and then each one that is a number of decision variable so and so yeah so this particle will fly through a high dimensional space through the collective behavior of all these individuals so that they are able to work together to find a solution so that is something very similar to the end colony optimization using the swarm intelligence but you we are going to use different kind of concept and update rule. so this is the ingredient we need to have particles and then so, so that is about the population a group of particles right here and then um, it forms a swarm yeah so that is a population of particle and then that means say we have bird one bird two up to bird five right here so each bird will determine what to do that is about the update route so 
the main ingredient that is the bird. We call this as a particle, and then so the next important ingredient that is the update rule. Update rule: where to go, where each bird is going to move to according to the local information or the global information. Uh, this is a figure just to show what will happen. In the iteration of the PSO, that is the iteration zero, and then so we are going to distribute all these particles, or you can regard it as a bird. Yeah. So each bird will fall, will be will be flying into different direction. So when we increase the number of particles, uh, sorry, when we increase the number of iteration, for example, this is the first iteration. After they con after they collect the local information, they get a sense about where the global minimum it is. So they will come closer, come closer, and then finally at the iteration end, they get to this start position. That is the global minimum. Yeah. So this is what we would like to develop, and this is the notation and. Uh, I'm not going to go into details about that. I will introduce later on. In general, we have two basic particle swarm of algorithm, and then uh, the main difference that is the size of the labor hub. So that uh, we call this is the first one that is the global best PSO. The next one that is the local best PSO. So the size of the labor hub that is something to do with the social network. When we talk about the global best PSO, that is the star topology that is in this figure. You can see that each blue circles right here represent a particle. Yeah. So this is a particle right here. They are fully connected to each one of them right here. It means that the information, yeah, the social information. That can pass on to every one of this particle, so that's why this is the global best. When we talk about the social information, that is the best position found by the swarm. Everyone knows about that. Yeah, the next one that is the local best. So the social network, that is, uh, for example, a wing topology two, three, four. They are not fully connected network, so. Um, so that's why all of these three topologies they can be used in the local best. When we talk about the wing topology, and then the labor hub, the labors of a particle that is just a small number of particles in the swarm. For example, we have a link right here. So that means this guy, the labor hub, is this one and this one. Yeah. So they form a group in this labor in this lab neighborhood region, and then. The info, the social information can only be exchanged with this group. Yeah, so that means when others they have the information, uh, they cannot immediately immediately send it to this guy. Yeah, so the social information that is the local best position. Having said that, because this guy has a connection with them, although the local information cannot be sent immediately. But when iteration increase, and then this information will be passed into this group as well. Yeah, we will show what to do and what it is later on.